I don't need to tell you that the past week in world events has been one of the worst weeks we have seen in this already ugly century. Some of the worst violence, perhaps the worst violence, we have seen committed directly against the Jewish people since World War II. And now the prospect, potentially, of regional war in the Middle East, or worse, with all that entails. All this, sadly, you know already. But putting all this aside, I do need to share something else. That while responsibility for the violence of the past week lies squarely with the butchers of Hamas and their backers in Iran, we also need to take a good, hard, difficult look at how American fecklessness and failed foreign policy, particularly with regard to their treatment of Iran and Israel, have empowered the bad guys in Gaza and Tehran, while weakening the position of the good guys in Washington and Jerusalem. Yeah, I know, I said it, there's good guys and bad guys here, because this really is a battle between barbarism and civilization. And I'm sorry, it is very, very hard for me to take American foreign policy seriously at the moment, especially when this guy, Jake Sullivan, is national security advisor. Here he is less than two weeks ago. What we said is we want to depressurize, de-escalate, and ultimately integrate the Middle East region. The war in Yemen is in its 19 month of truce. For now, the Iranian attacks against U.S. forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. And how is that working out for you? Meanwhile, let's not forget that Hamas's backers, Iran, recently signed a deal to see $6 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars in frozen assets giving back to them. Money which, despite the Hamas terrorist attack, a phrase which doesn't even begin to describe the level of psychotic evil we are talking about, the U.S. has not moved to claw back or block. This even though, as Secretary of State Anthony Blinken noted, Iran uses this money for terrorism. What do you say about the argument that money is fungible? So Iran may have known this money is coming and used other funds to help fund this attack that happened. Iran has, ha, Iran has unfortunately always used and focused its funds on supporting terrorism, on supporting groups like, uh, like Hamas, uh, and it's done that when there have been sanctions, it's done that when there haven't been sanctions, and it's always prioritized that. So why not give them another $6 billion, honestly? And administration flak John Kirby also acknowledged that Hamas wouldn't exist without money from Iran. Hamas wouldn't have been able to function at all had it not been for propping up by the Iranian regime. But we haven't seen any specific evidence uh, that tells us they were uh, witting, involved in the planning, uh, or uh, involved in the resourcing and, uh, and the training that went into this very complex set of attacks over the weekend. So Iran gives Hamas money, but Iran had nothing to do with the terrorist attack in Israel. I don't want to bring Maury Povich out here, but I think the lie detector would say that was a lie. And it gets worse, because under the Biden administration, Iran has been the recipient not just of that $6 billion deal, but as much as $50 billion in unfrozen assets from before the revolution, as well as from the removal of sanctions on things like the sale of oil. That $50 billion can buy a lot of bloodshed. So the question is, why? Why is America allowing this? Well, to get to the roots of this, let's have a little history lesson. And we have to understand what the Biden administration is all about, which is just a continuation of what the Obama administration was all about. Particularly, what we're talking about here is the so-called Iran deal, the JCPOA, or Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. That was the bizarre program by the Obama administration that seemed, and still seems, designed with one goal in mind. Empower Iran to become not just the funder of global terror networks such as Hezbollah, 
at a pariah theocracy, theocracy that shoots people on sight for defying its orders about hijabs and much else besides, but also turn it into a regional player that controls much of Lebanon with thousands of rockets aimed at Israel and even potentially a nuclear power with atomic weapons aimed at the Jewish state or anyone else who decides to get in Tehran's way. Now again, any reasonable person would ask why the U.S. has done this. Since 1979, Iran has been a pariah state, one that for one of the first acts of its theocracy after the revolution was to take a group of Americans hostage in the U.S. Embassy and hold them for 444 days. In the language of the Ayatollahs who took over Iran, the U.S. was the great Satan and Israel its little brother. So what's changed? Well, not that rhetoric, but what about Iran's leadership? Nah, that's still the same. The only thing that's changed here is America's leadership. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Barack Obama wanted to fundamentally transform America and fundamentally transform it, he did using Iran. Obama may have talked a politician's game about American exceptionalism, but the fact is that in his actions, he believed that America was not an exceptional nation at all, but a flawed one, one that needed, again, to be fundamentally transformed. And to transform America, Obama would have to see it taken down a peg. And by creating a multilateral post-Cold War world, that would mean the old United States wouldn't be there telling everyone what to do, or for that matter, keeping them in line. It was and remains fundamentally a disaster, from the Arab Spring to the disaster in Libya to much else besides. But in the process, Israel, which has always had deep ties to the United States, in no small part because it too has an exceptional history and creed, also had to be downgraded. No longer would it be the nation's most important ally of the Middle East. Obama instead gave that role tacitly to Iran, which it sought to empower through that JCPOA, the nuclear deal, and even allowed to make money through a Hezbollah drug trafficking network. Now, of course, all this downgrading of Israel, the only democracy in the region, also empowered anti-Semitism and Hamas, which relies, as we have seen, on Iranian funding. Writing in Tablet Magazine this week, Lee Smith made an excellent point. He said Obama's transformation of America was to remake it in his own image by junking the idea that America is exceptional and dissolving the country's borders with the rest of the world. America is not unique. It is as sinful as any other nation, he was effectively arguing, and possibly worse. What better way to make that point, he continued, than by throwing Israel overboard and replacing it with Iran, a country that preaches God's retribution against America. Now, Joe Biden, as I have repeatedly said on this program, is just finishing the work of the Obama administration. And I gotta say, isn't he just doing an amazing job of it?